Hello and welcome to Kingdom of Context. I'm Sean. I want to thank you for joining us here tonight. Today we're going to have a, a, a unique um, uh, topic to discuss and an awesome guest, Jake Grant. He's going to be telling us about a game that he invented. Uh, real quick, I want to say thank you for all the members that are here as well as all the moderators. Thanks for being here and being in the live chat, keeping things uh, civil and in order. And uh, I think that tonight you probably won't have a lot of work to do. So, all right, without further ado, let's bring on Jake and let's discuss. Hey, Jake, how are you doing tonight? Hello. Hey, I'm doing pretty great. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so you, I, I saw this floating around social media about a week ago and, um, I, I, you asked, you know, can we talk about it tonight? And I think that it looks like a really cool thing. So tell us about, um, this game that you've created and that you currently have on Kickstarter. All right. Well, the game tribe total eclipse is the first edition of my game that I'm releasing right now. We've been working on it for nearly five years. Uh, when my wife and I first got married, we knew we wanted to make some kind of biblically themed game. Back then it was more of the iteration of like a trading card game in the early stages, right? Um, but uh, I love games and growing up uh, playing games, board games, particularly with my family uh, was a really big part of memory making. Um, we used to play games like Risk. We would play Settlers of Catan. Um, and so to have a game on that level of engagement and fun with the family and strategy that was themed after the scriptures, which I also, uh, you know, I have a big part of my heart is, you know, uh, uh, in love with the word of the almighty, right? So I, I wanted to marry those two concepts. But also, if anybody grew up in kind of a traditional Christian home, uh, is familiar with some of the games that were put out over the years by the church community, so to speak, right? Uh, oftentimes, they're very corny. They're very kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I don't want to put anybody down, but sometimes as a kid growing up, I got the, they weren't well-designed games. They weren't games that were strategy-based uh, um, they were more like memory verse memorizing card games, you know, like it was very uh, ja uh, jaunted in the way that people would play games that were Christian themed. And so I wanted to create something that was really seamless in terms of fun and engaging that somebody who wasn't familiar with the scriptures could play and, and have just as much fun. But somebody uh, who loves the scriptures would see all these uh, themed elements in the cards and such. So. I know I'm I'm running away with the train there, Sean. <laughs> Jump in and grab me. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, th this is great. So, you you had an interest in this. You said you about 2019. You started really digging in to try to create. I'm guessing the artwork and the general flow of the game. Um, and so that's really cool. Uh, what you said it's a strategy game, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, it's a a strategy game. Um, and and you'll see uh, kind of the explanation I give in the the short video I made for Sean and you guys here at Kingdom in Context, uh, it, it, it explains that the, the most base level comparison would be the marriage between chess and Texas Hold'em poker, right? That would be the most base level, hey, these are similar games, and if you understand how to play those games, this game will fall right into place. Um, I wanted it to be simple for people who were 
new to strategy games and new to board games in general to be able to get into it. Because another issue with creating a board game, and I went through all of this process trying to come up with the idea, right, is having something with a, a really complex rule set, uh, a book like this thick to figure out how to get going can often kill the you know the yeah. momentum of getting people to sit down and play with you, right? Right. You, you want to have people be able to sit down and be like, look, it's super simple. Within five minutes, they understand the base concept and then you're right off to the races and and uh and so that's the the concept of how i wanted to transition from the clunky memory verse kind of church games that i grew up playing to something that was themed after the scriptures but just as fun as playing Catan or playing risk or or whatever awesome yeah well let's take a look at this video real quick All right. Hello. What's up, Kingdom in Context? Thanks, Sean, for having us on. I figured I'd film you guys a short explanation video for how the game Tribe works. So uh, we're running our Kickstarter, and uh, we have until April 20th to get this thing funded. And this is the official prototype, guys. So uh, forgive if you hear some extra noises in the video. we got a growing family, two... Uh, Girls chilling out here in the background, and we got a baby, so please excuse any little cries or bibbles, you know. But, uh, so, yeah, this is what it would look like, playing at home, sit on your coffee table. We have the board here, and uh, we have these pieces are representative. Uh, it's not what the finished uh, kind of custom figures would look like, but we like to play with the cool-looking warrior guys. But the game, the standard version, will all come with kind of like a colored nubby to represent your pawn. And here's the deck of cards. Tribe cards are mirrored in a, a lot of ways to a traditional poker playing deck. And if you want to envision the most basic base comparative example of this game, it would be the game of chess married to Texas Hold'em poker. So, um... The, the cards themselves are not traditional playing cards, however. All right, so Tribe's cards are biblically themed. Now, uh, we have here uh, the five of the face of man. And you might wonder, how are the suits themed if it's not after your traditional diamond, club, heart, you know, that whole set, right? Well... Here, it's based off of the four faces of the cherubim, which have a very, very interesting parallel to the encampment of the tribes of Israel as uh, recorded in Numbers. And so we have here the five, right? And you can see the, the warrior styling. It just is a, a really cool way to kind of depict each of the numbers. You also have the Paleo-Hebrew equivalent on each of the shoulders of the traditional two through 10, right? 
Um, not only that, but you have a variety of other cool cards in the game. And before we get into actual how to play the game, uh, I just want to show you some of the special cards in the game of Tribe uh, that are a twist to or in addition to the traditional poker card parallel. The Ace, which is instead for Tribe, an Olive Tav card. And this card has special modifying abilities in play. It's kind of like a glass cannon. If you happen to uh, draw this card and use it to represent your pawn, if your opponent reveals this card, if it defeats an opponent piece, it vaporizes and you have to reset your pawn and draw again. And uh, I know I'm getting into the weeds already, but uh, so it's got kind of a special modifier there. We also have the special card of the Cherubim cards. The Cherubim cards, there are four of these. They act as wild cards and can be used to complete or add to any pair uh, or fill any set, straight, or flush. And finally, we have the Inheritance Token. The Inheritance Token is very cool and is used in our game to bluff. It is used to earn extra points and it can be used face down. You know, your opponent will think it's, uh, you know, either something added to a pair or if it's a high card, uh, they will think it's, you know, something that it might not be. And if you engage this center piece and move it all the way back one tile per turn uh, and score you will gain an additional inheritance point if you were bluffing with inheritance token if it is revealed however then your opponent one will know that you're trying to score extra points also that you have a weaker hand because it uh, either if it's revealed by itself, you have no hand, and your opponent automatically defeats your piece. Uh, or if it's revealed and you have it paired with a high card, if your opponent defeats your high card, they then earn an extra point in addition to the one point for defeating your pawn and resetting it off the board. Um, so in the game, what is this? This piece is a representative, it's a prototype, of the center eclipse token and each game you start with this in the middle of the board and so your goal is to score inheritance points by two means you may either return this by moving your pawn each turn and pushing this each turn one space back to one of your starting symbols uh, you can score in that way or you can score by defeating an opponent Piece. The strength of your piece is denoted by the cards that you draw. At the beginning of each game, you draw two cards. The strength of your pawn is denoted by the cards that you draw. So you can only play the highest eligible uh, tiered poker hand equivalent. You can draw up to five cards in your hand, but each game starts off with drawing two cards now i've placed down my my best playable hand right now which is a pair right well she does not know that i have a pair except for the fact that she just initiated battle and has attacked my piece moving into me so we both are revealing our cards i had a pair and she had a pair of kings with a wild completing that other king so normally my pair would defeat her and so upon battle um when somebody is attacking uh that's the only time somebody else is defeated so you do not defeat an opponent in defending but because she had a stronger hand than me and initiated battle she had a king card, and this is another cool element of Tribe, is each of the face cards, and it's beyond traditional face cards, uh, because you have the uh, queen and the jack represented rather by the captain and the lieutenant, um, and then of course the prince of the, tr the suit, um, and each of those are given a little special thing on their shoulder, something that represents 
one of the 12 tribes. So there's a cool biblical theming there. Uh, there's a uh, element that uh, is very cool. So anyways, my wife has defeated my piece. And right in the process of me trying to score, pushing this in my next turn, I was going to try to get to one of my starting locations to score. And she has defeated me. My piece is reset off the board. I lose my awesome early pair that I drew uh, into the discard pile it goes and on my turn I now may re-engage now she is going to then move around the board and try to push this all the way back before I can get into action and so uh, of course she's going to probably score this game reset the match we then discard our cards um, if you score by returning it to your starting location, uh, then you reset the game and draw two new cards. Everybody goes back off the board. This goes in the middle and the game continues on. The cool thing about scoring inheritance points is this. You can then purchase movement for your pawn when engaging, so it's no longer just based on the strength of your drawn playable hand, but it is also the wit and cunning of moving around the board. So now once you have moved off a starting location, you can then engage in purchasable movement. Now this is based on the traditional chess movement. You know, we have the movement, we have diagonal movement, we have the horsey L shape, right? The, the knight's movement. We have the bishop's diagonal at distance movement, as long as you stay in line, of course. We have horizontal and vertical movement. And then, of course, we have omnidirectional uh, movement, such as the queen would have in traditional chess. And so this, in later rounds of the game, really ramps up the pressure because you have people who might not have the strongest hand but can now move around the board very quickly and try to score points. And so you need 12 inheritance points to win the game. It costs different uh, values to then get that extra speed and movement to move around each turn. So you're kind of uh, in a battle between spending points to gain enhanced movement and saving points to win the game of Tribe. So thank you guys for watching this short, brief explainer, uh, and uh, I hope you guys can pledge to support our Kickstarter. We have, once again, till April 20th. Sorry, one second. I'm trying to get this... I'm trying to get this layout set up uh, so that we can look at it. <laughs> I don't know why it's not doing this. <laughs> no worries. That's so weird. <clears throat> try this there we go yep well that's pretty much the gist of it I, I hope i didn't give you guys a word salad that was literally just on the go run and gun filmed it this afternoon um i i uh, i'm really excited uh, i i think this game will be really fun uh for families it's up to four players um and then in the future uh there's tournament style possibility where i can have up to eight people all playing on the same board all moving around okay. and playing like a like an actual you know when you think of like texas hold'em right you think of that big table where everybody can sit around together and play uh and uh that's kind of what i wanted but of course you know uh this early prototype will be up to four players um okay. and yeah so that's uh, hopefully did that make some sense john i, I don't know th i think so so let me try to give a playback to what i think i understood here um some of the pieces all right, so depending on what cards you have, that, like you said, that gives strength to the moves that your pieces can do on the board. Is that right? So it's rather your piece is represented by the cards that you play. But so that's but, so, but you don't have to flip your cards over. So yeah. you're, there is a, a sense of uh, your opponents don't know. Okay, sorry. Say that again. Yeah, so, so the movement is separate from the cards uh, in terms of movement um each person moves their pawn one space per turn until they purchase with points that they earn further movement ability so 
okay. the cards themselves represent the strength or of uh, the power of your pawn when engaging in battle with the other player. Okay. So whenever somebody attacks another pawn, you reveal your cards and um, and then revealed cards would remain revealed. Uh, so once you expose, oh, I have a pair here, I'm moving around the board, uh, then your opponent can then deal likewise and, and choose to save up, you know, draw a couple extra cards in order to get something stronger than what you have on the board already. Uh, or you can try to bluff your opponent with those tokens. So I, I'm, I'm not trying to... Uh, get off off the rail here but uh, did that answer your question <laughs> yeah there, but that's where the strategy comes in you have you have yeah. options that you can do um and so i was just trying to i was trying to make sure i understood the correlation between the pieces on the board and the cards that you hold and that you draw do you draw every so often or do you draw just two at the beginning and then you're you, those are the only two you have yeah so at at the beginning of each game round uh you draw two cards you start with two cards and each turn, you may draw one additional card up to five cards. Okay. Okay. Interesting. All right. Yeah, and I'm sure some of my questions would be answered if I was actually just sitting down playing and we started going through different scenarios, just like yeah. all all types of games. Um, so yeah, four players to begin. You're you're going to enhance it to eight players in the future, but four players for now. Um, you draw two cards to start, and of course you choose your your player character piece. And, yeah. uh, and that'll correspond with the pawn that you choose as well. And so that's cool, man. Yeah, I, I think this is fun. I definitely see the correlation with uh, chess and, and like you said, Texas Hold'em. That's pretty interesting. So um, this is on Kickstarter, everybody. So if you're not familiar with Kickstarter, this is something that I think is, you know, we, it's very important. Uh, we kind of give a good breakdown um, because Kickstarter is how many people, especially inventors like Jake, it's how they actually get their products, get their ideas out to other people. So I'm going to put this on screen. This is going to be Jake's Kickstarter page he created for this project. And so we can talk about it. And the link for this is in the video description. So what I what I want to have everybody do, Jake's going to explain the Kickstarter process. I don't go there yet, but at the end of this video or after Jake explains it, I want everybody to go there and help him get this funded. He's only got, a, looks like a couple thousand more to go, 2,500 more to go. So I want to I want, see if we can help him get to his funding goal tonight. So Jake, would you like to talk a little bit about the Kickstarter page? Absolutely. Well, Kickstarter is a great way for creators to gain the support they need to produce a product without having to foot the bill uh, before there's any interest. Uh, so anybody who pledges to this Kickstarter, you do get a game. So it's basically the concept of a pre-order. Uh, the game is uh, scheduled to ship this midsummer. Uh, so the, once the campaign ends, uh, people who have pledged the payments deducted from their bank account, I then take that money and order a bunch of the games and ship it out to everybody this summer. Uh, so we have uh, two things available in terms of uh, the available rewards or uh, things people can pledge for. I have a standard version, uh, which is just going to be the the standard template. And then I have a, a limited edition, one out of a hundred uh, total eclipse, like the, the first edition version. And this is for people who really want to help kind of support it. It's only $17 more expensive. I wasn't too ambitious, but um, it's, a, it's a way to kind of thank people who are supporting the game early. And so I'm going to have a signed copy of the game with a custom artwork on the box. And uh, yeah, so just uh, pretty much both are the same game, though. So you're not losing out if you just order the standard version. It uh, comes with the four uh, player tokens, the centerpiece, uh, the deck of cards, the board, um, and the rules. And um that's pretty much the rundown. So the reason I'm running a Kickstarter is uh, my manufacturer, uh, it costs uh, less if you order in bulk. So the reason I'm running it this way, I'm not just selling directly to consumer through a website or something, is if I get enough interest, if I, enough people order the game, I can then take that money and then order a bunch of the games at a cheaper cost to me. Um, so that's kind of why I've decided to go through Kickstarter versus just setting up a website. But after this campaign's over, I will probably set up a, like a, a website for people, uh, to get the game later on in the future. Awesome. 
Awesome. Yeah. Um, cause Kickstarter is now you chose, it looks like on your Kickstarter campaign, you chose all or nothing. Is that right? Yeah, I think all Kickstarters actually operate that way. Well, I, I guess maybe they may have changed it. I thought they had a, an option in the past where like, if you did only 30 days, then you could, you could keep whatever you earn. But if you did 60 days, then it was all or nothing either way. It's he's got an all or nothing one guys. So if you have already support, uh, pledged to this, um, if he doesn't reach the 7,000 and all the donations go back to the people that pledged him. So this is why we want to get the word out tonight. He's got five days left on this uh, particular campaign. So go to the link below, check out the, the tribe total eclipse game on Kickstarter so that you can pick out which, which level you want to pledge. And that way you can help him reach his goal of $7,000 in order to get this funded so he can get these produced at a reasonable price and be able to sell them to you and your family. That's the idea. That's the goal. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow. because uh, there aren't a lot of games like this. And um, it's, it looks like you put a lot of effort, a lot of work and thought into this game. And so I, I definitely want to see you rewarded. And I want to see, you know, I, I, this definitely could be a really fun game you could play. Um with the family. Yeah. There's no, there's no scantily clad woman as, as you know, on the cards, you know, there's no, uh, you know, there's no demonic themes. There's no spells being cast. You know what I mean? There's, there's no weirdness like so many other strategy games out there. So if you want your, your children will love the strategy games. Your teenagers will love the strategy games. Um, I'm an adult. I love strategy games. <laughs> so I promise you guys, this will be a fun thing that you can play with friends and family and not feel guilty about it. <laughs> and, and it's also designed to be uh, also a teaching tool, a witnessing tool uh, that's not overtly religious in your face. Oh, I don't want to play Jesus memory verse game. You know, <laughs> instead, it's going to be something where you can be like, hey, you know, the, the cherubim and the scriptures have four faces. Did you know that, you know, the, this is what the suits are after? Did you know angels in the Bible look nothing like we're shown? <laughs> um, you know, there, there's the concept of uh, the numbers being also uh, represented. You have the paleo Hebrew uh, on the shoulder and the artwork. So it's very subtle. It's very subtle. Um, but uh, you have the fringes on the, the corners of the garments of the tribes. And, you know, of course, any biblical scholar with a keen eye will be able to look and see some of these parallels I'm making. And and uh, I, I just hope you guys, uh, you know, get the experience that I had growing up playing fun games with my family. Um, I, I grew up as a missionary kid and we didn't have great internet. So we weren't always watching movies and playing games when I lived overseas. What we would do is we pull out Catan or we play risk or whatever. And uh, man, t precious moments and, uh, and time spent really have to be carved out in today's world, you know? And, yeah. and that's why board games are so, uh, so great. You know, because you actually put the phone down and you focus on one another and, and you, there's a little competition there. And, um, you know, so that was kind of the heart behind it. I just I wanted to give and we have a lot of uh, group events uh, and, and we love to go and hang out with people. So having something I can bring and be like, hey, after dinner, you guys want to play some tribe? You know, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, brother. Um, and I know this definitely takes a lot of thought, a lot of effort long time ago, um, I was working for us cellular and I was asked to come up with a marketing plan. And while I was doing that, I thought of a board game pertaining to cell phones and cell phone companies. And so I, I was up all night creating this board game and I thought they were going to love it because it could be a product we could sell in the stores, just like you could sell additional accessories in the store. And it could be a product they could sell in Walmarts and targets and, and help them with additional revenue and, and just promote their product for free. And what it ended up being, they, did, they didn't like the game um, because they just didn't want to be in that space, so to speak. But it actually, I tried to build it off biblical principles, you know, which is what obviously you're doing here as well. Um, and I, and I, it was interesting to see because the, the person I pitched it to, he was also a Christian. And he kind of, he asked, he goes, why, why does this feel like the, the opposite of Monopoly? And I was like, well, because I intentionally designed it so that the only way you win is by helping out someone else become successful. You know, and so, uh, and he's like, that's it. He's like, what is this? Is this a Christian game? And I was like, how did you immediately know the opposite of Monopoly would be a Christian concept? So, 
<laughs> so it's, it's interesting to, but I do know it's difficult guys. If you're out there, this is not an easy task to create a strategy game or any type of board game that makes sense. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, well, we got to be careful when the opposite of Christianity is the definition of capitalism, right? <laughs> right, right, <laughs> oh, right. So, there, so this is a unique concept because this game doesn't look like there's any wagering of money. So even though you're given the analogy of like you hold cards in your hands, so there's the aspect of Texas Hold'em. There's no actual. There's no. There's no gambling in this game. There's no. Like I said before, there's no. Um, um, it's not like a a game that that uh, encourages any type of uh, lascivious behavior or greedy behavior. Um, there's, this is a game that's just, uh, a, to me, it looks like a very fun strategy game that you can play with friends and family. So yeah, this is pretty cool, Jake. Uh, when did you, so you said, you said once you get funded, uh, the people that you're going to be giving the rewards for the Kickstarter help, you're, that'll be shipped out this summer. Is that what you said? Yes. So anybody who backs before April 20th, uh, they're going to get their game mid mid to late summer. Uh, I kind of have like a, a two month window there to get with the manufacturer, make sure everything's going to get there on time. And, and by the summer, everybody should be getting their game. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I hope to see this game on Lighthouse as well uh, soon. And so, but so how long does it take to get the, like the once you reach your goal and you get the you have the funds to create your initial order with your supplier your distributor i should say your your supplier your vendor i don't know exactly yeah. what it's called um how long does it take them to make the first run of games so uh it it took me about a month to get my copy back so once i get the order fulfilled uh i mean in all reality the sooner the better uh but once i place the order um, I'm estimating June or late June, early July for when it would should ship out from the manufacturer. And then, of course, depending on, you know, what address you put in, I don't know. Uh, I, it is for U.S. only uh, right now. I know I've had some people interested overseas, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't figure out the shipping there. So uh, just kind of did U.S. only for now. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, guys, yes, take a moment. It's in the, the video uh, description of this video has the link to his Kickstarter campaign. Okay, so make sure we go there. In fact, let's give me just a minute. I'm going to drop it in the live chat as well. And let me see if I can give some extra, extra boost if anyone just wants to click it directly from the live chat. I just put it in there for you. And go, let's go support Jake in this game. Let's, I mean, he's almost there. He's He's got... Uh, just like 35% left of his goal to reach. He's got five days left, but treat it like today's the last day. So go help him get funded tonight if you're watching this. Um, I think this is be an amazing thing to see out there. So uh, I'd like to buy one and we could see, you know, we could play it. Um, this would be pretty cool. This would be, this would be pretty cool. In fact, you could actually do a pretty cool live stream where multiple people are all playing at the same time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be pretty fun. Across the world, across the country, you know, you could just live stream it, and you could be playing, and you just have to, you know, move everyone's pieces for them. But that there, this would be this would be really fun. You could really you have a good time with this, because, you know, if uh, if if the world collapses, you're gonna need something to do with no electricity, guys. I'm letting you know right now. <laughs> oh, that's the one-two left hook, right? Like, hey, right. guys, you're not gonna have TV forever. You know? That's right. <laughs> when they oh, tell you to, to be a prepper, this is part of your preparation. You need something to do. <laughs> something to do while you're in you the bunker, right? <laughs> when you're in the bunker. Out in the woods, right? <laughs> That's right. Someone in the live chat said it needs an OPA card. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. So what uh, what would you like to see this game? Because you, you said that this is like the first iteration, right? This is the first like beginning part of this uh what would you like to see this game grow into over time oh oh man i, I have some big visions you know the scriptures okay. say my my people perish for lack of vision right That's well right. you know well uh my big end goal would be to have this kind of expand um uh where there's some elements of the game that i've wanted to add into it um, right now, this is a very functional, fun strategy game, but I would like to add elements 
that can introduce other cool specialized cards into the mix. Um, and of course, uh, like ideally I'd like to have like tournament type things because I, I know Sean, me and you we're feast keepers. We like to get together and do the, the ways of the most high. So, um, I wanted a game that I could bring to a Sukkot one year and, you know, lay out on the table, uh, and just be like, all right, party game time and have, you know, eight people sit down and us all have a jam. And, and so I mentioned earlier about how it's four players right now, but having up to eight players would be my end goal. Uh, maybe a larger board, uh, maybe cool, you know, cool little custom pieces, uh, and stuff. Um, I do have an option on the Kickstarter for, uh, for people to add on some, custom minifigures uh to use instead of the the colored nubby pawn um and that right now is my next step of development i, I i'm getting four cool warriors for anybody who wants to do that of course uh it's um right now just in the in the stages of getting it into people's hands so people can like the game and then we can you know make some fancier versions and stuff but um sure. yeah i would love to have a big a big game I could bring to Sukkot and have up to eight people sitting down. And, and that's my next kind of development process is, um, you know, kind of pushing towards competitive play, having, you know, parties where people can get together and have a, a big tribe tournament one night. And, uh, and then, you know, start to show that it's a, it's a fun thing that people can do with their fellowships or their family. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, Randy, he lifting the veil, exposing darkness. He's in live chat saying he has some custom chair memoir work. If you're interested, just, Ooh, just reach cool. out to him. Yeah. So Randy is, um, um, I don't know if you know, he does, he's, um, RL books. Have you ever seen his books? Um, I'm not familiar off the top of my head. I'm sorry, Randy. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so let me show you real quick. I'll show you one of his products. Um, and he does the artwork for him too. So he's extremely talented. So just in case you want some additional artwork for future cards or whatnot, uh, let me go to this. You see this artwork here? That's his book and that's his artwork. Oh, it's not showing up yet. One second. You see that Dream Warrior? Oh, very cool. Yeah, so he's extremely talented and uh, that's it. He can do that. So just let him know. Also, you know, it's so funny. You talk about getting together for the feast and stuff. I, I joke to my wife because um, people ask us all the time, when are we as kingdom of context, when are we going to host a feast? And I just, I just kind of chuckle and I'm like, we're not ready yet. We're not, we're not there yet. But in the future, if we ever did, here's what I got planned for the feasts is to uh, this right here, Put this on screen. So you'd see this. So I want to get about 10 of these and then we're going to have a live Mario Kart racing at the yes. feast. Yes. Sign you me can, up. <laughs> you can, these will go like, these will go like 15 miles an hour. Wow. And so you can do some good drifting at 15 miles an hour. And then uh, you would have a full on Mario Kart race circuits at the feast. It'd be great. Kids and adults both. Wow. That that's so that's a great idea. I would yeah. love to do that. You just need a little bit of land, but uh, we could do it. Big open field. But um, so yeah, man, this is this is a really cool idea, Jake. I think you did great with this. Um, and I really, I really pray that uh, people respond to this. Go help him out. Um, looks like as we we're talking tonight, he's already jumped up a couple hundred dollars. So go. Thank go. you guys so much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, everybody who's already supported and, and everybody who's watching who might jump on there. I really appreciate you guys. You know, more than anything, it's not just the monetary, you know, pledging to get your copy. Just if you have a family member or somebody in your fellowship that loves board games and would appreciate something like this. I got five days left. I'm just trying to get the word out. So that would help me more than anything, honestly. Yep. That's awesome. Well, guys, uh, go check out his Kickstarters in the video description below. Did I already say that? Let me say it one more time. Guys, it's in the video description below. Go check out his Kickstarter campaign so you guys can help him make this a reality tonight because uh, this is he's almost there, and we want him to be able to capitalize on all the people that are willing to support him. So he has to reach that minimum $7,000 mark. And so just it's a minimum. You can, get, you can give more than that if you're inclined to, if it's on your heart. Uh, he can exceed that $7,000 goal. That's just his goal. But if he doesn't hit the goal, all the donations will go back to the people that gave them. So let's not let that happen. Let's get him there to that goal. And uh, I'd like to see this. Um, I'd like to have one of these in my hands and play it. And we can do a live stream review. That'd be great. Cool. That would be fun. That'd be fun. 
Jake, thanks for coming on so much. Uh, this is this is great. Um, as always, are you up still uploading stuff to your channel, or are you and Jeremiah solely focusing on on the show? Oh yeah. Uh, well, we uh, yeah we do Skiba News Nation uh, over on that channel. Um, I have a new music video, uh, my band Simply Prodigal. So that'll be going out on my channel soon guys keep a lookout for that i'm super excited about that uh uh but yeah uh other than that you know I, I really don't upload a lot of content onto my own youtube channel other than just kind of projects i've done over the years and stuff uh different interviews but uh if you guys like stuff like the book of enoch uh i did an audio dramatization of that and um and have some of our music on there and stuff but yeah uh most of our current kind of ongoing show stuff I do with Skiba News Nation, we're just putting on the that Skiba channel over there. All right. So yeah, this is Jake's channel. Looks like his uh, his highlighted video is the strategy board game. So if you go over there, you'll be able to see it there as well. But uh, go check him out on Kickstarter at the video at the link in the video description below, and let's help him get to his goal. So Jake, this is awesome, brother. Anything you'd like to say before we go? Yeah. Somebody was asking, hey, how long does one game take? Just a ballpark. Uh, so you can play the game in multiple rounds. Um, uh, if you just wanted something quick and easy, uh, you could do just one, one round in 15 minutes, uh, or less, uh, uh, as the game goes on, it speeds up as people earn movement points. And so if you played a full game to 12 points, uh, with two players, roughly 45 minutes, uh, if you played with four players, you got a little bit more in the mix there. So you got to bump up the time, you know, as people are kind of, you know, defeating others and earning points and spending points for better movement and such. Uh, so, you know, with four players, you're going to estimate a, a good hour and a half game. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's hopefully not too in depth. Uh, it, it, what I rambled through in that video there was, uh, kind of just glancing on the surface, but hopefully you guys can see how quick and easy it would be to pick up and stuff. Yeah, I think it would be like once you get the basic concept down of what the cards do, what motions you can make with the characters, I think it's going to be pretty, pretty easy to pick up. So like I said, usually it just takes me one or two times playing a game or at least watching someone play the game. And I've got, I've got it down unless it's some, some intricate, rule that's not that's not easily seen or some special strategy that doesn't get played very often um it, this one seemed like you could pick it up like jake said within five minutes so yeah this would be fun all right guys is there any more questions about the game before we go i'm just checking the live chat here just, uh... mm -hmm. thank you everybody once again uh, thank you sean for having me on and, and helping yeah. me get the word out i really appreciate it yeah i don't see any other questions but guys go check out the video description that's where you can find the link to his kickstarter uh, campaign help him get this funded tonight and i think this is going to be a blast for uh for many families so i want to thank you thanks jake for coming on and thank you everyone for watching this and we will see you guys next time get in context